Okay, today we're going to talk to Mem Pumza Mboro. Welcome, Mem. Thank you. And uh, Mem, can you share with us how did you become a researcher? Okay. Um, I was always passionate about education from my secondary school years. So um, I went to a session about teaching. And then when I got to my fourth year, I realized that there's actually more to this than where I was. So I decided to explore. I went into my honors while I was doing my teaching and then went into my master's and landed here while I was well, currently doing with my PhD. But that's basically just the passion for education and wanting to grow from that. Thank you so much. And then what are you currently waiting on? Currently, I'm busy with my PhD. Uh, it has to do with the representation of women, historically significant women, in our history education curriculum and in social sciences. There's a bit of a lacuna when it comes to the representation of women in history education and in the curriculum. So that's what I'm advocating for with my PhD. I'm also working on putting a few articles together just to start my publishing career in that sense. Thank you so much. And then, ma'am, taking into consideration your work, is there any specific uh, theory or school of thought that influence your writing? Yes. Um, because I'm looking at the representation of women, especially in the curriculum, in our education curriculum, so like history education, my theory that I'm using is radical feminism. It has to do with the emancipation and liberation of women uh, in our history texts, in how they are represented not just alongside their counterparts, but as women by themselves and their contributions to our history. South African history is my focus, but also international history. It's important that we look at and we celebrate and we acknowledge the works and contributions of women throughout. Um, and it's, I feel that it's also important to have that being shown in our curriculum, especially in the FET phase, which is the further education and training phase, so that there's an equal representation. I mean, in education, we speak of gender equity or gender equality and gender equality. So that needs to be shown even in the work that we teach when we go out into those schools. So that's that's what I'm all about. That's what I'm advocating for. Thank you so much. Uh, Ma'am, are there any specific or exciting gaps within your field of study? Yes. Uh, the theory of the liberation and the representation of women is not just in South Africa. It's growing all around Africa. So we're getting people like Moyana, who's, who published in 2021, speaking about the representation of women in Kenya, the representations of women in Ghana. So people are starting to recognize that it's important that we have these, these historically significant women who are acknowledged for their contributions throughout history. And hopefully that will just, once it gets into our education, that it will spread just throughout our society and maybe we'll have less uh, problems when it comes to your GBV, your gender-based violence, and men and women will have a better understanding and respect for each other even from a young age if they are taught about their equity and equality and even the contributions of women in, in education while they're in school. So that's, again, that's what I'm all about. That's what I'm here for. Thank you, ma'am. And then, what role is technology playing in the field of education? Wow, oh, okay. Technology is playing a very big role in education, especially uh, with emerging from COVID. So we are learning that <laughs> uh, 24 hours a person can work remotely. And um, with, with artificial intelligence, even your chat GPT is also coming up. So there's a lot that's going on in terms of innovation when it comes to technology. And uh, it's becoming an integral part of our lives going forward because we don't know what the future holds. We didn't know that COVID was going to take place. We don't know what's ahead. So it's good to just reinforce everything, take everything in as, as it has happened, and then learn from that and move forward with those tools. So I think when it comes to technology, yes, it's important, uh, especially in education, because we want to have access to our learners. 
want to have access to our students as well, whether they're on campus or not, and they also want to have access to us. So that's important. If if we could, as South Africa, I mean, let's try and get Wi-Fi everywhere, and not just having different institutions, but even in your social spaces where you have uh, connectivity or Wi-Fi connectivity outside of your mall, on the street, as you're walking along, that is what I envision, and that's what I wish we would have. Uh, moving forward, but yeah, technology is definitely a big part of our lives moving forward. So I'm all for blended learning. So that's your combination of your face-to-face -face learning and then the incorporation of technology. So yeah. Thank you so much, Nina. And then, what message can you share with aspiring researchers? The message I would share, which is was my experience, and I was very happy with it. I would say um, make connections. When you go to your workshops and you go to your conferences, reach out to people, um, make those connections, make those friends, especially people who are in the same field as you, um, because you're going to grow up with those people within academia and they can take you from level to level. And when you study, I mean, when you when you out, when you're sitting at home and you're writing your chapters, your different chapters, and you're doing your corrections, it's a lonely journey. But if you have people who you've connected with from the conferences you've attended, national and international, and the workshops you've attended, you can reach out to those people and you can form sort of a community of people who can help you go from strength to strength in this journey, as lonely as it is. But um, if there are people who you've connected with and people who can help you on the journey, then that's what you do. So for me, my advice would be connect with people. Go to the conferences, go to the workshops, connect with people, form relationships, and take it from there. You won't regret it. Thank you so much. So collaboration and community of practice Definitely. play a major role in research. Definitely. Thank you so much, ma'am. And then, apart from research, what message can you share? Apart from research, what are your other interests? My hobbies, I'm a very family oriented person. So, I like, well, recently, it's been movies, I've been, my daughter is crazy about Frozen, so we've been watching a lot of that. Um, yeah, the outdoors per I'm an outdoors person, so we like to go hiking, we like spending the day at the beach, we uh, indoors, we like watching movies, we like spending time with family, having fun with your family, right? So those that's what I enjoy. I like creating those memories with my families and traveling with them. A small family and then I have a bigger family. Because with <laughs> from my background, my brother's kids, I call them my kids. So my daughter has about, there's seven of them now. So she has about five brothers and two sisters. And then it's her. So those are all of my kids. So when we travel, that's the big family thing. That's what I like to do. That's when I come alive the most when I'm with them. And then when it's just me, my daughter, and my fiance, that also makes me happy. But the Frozen is my daughter. So <laughs> that's what I'm doing a lot of now. Uh, that's, that's my happy place. That's what I like to do. Thank you so much for your time and thank you for sharing with us. Thank you. Thank you.